Management solutions are one of the best friends of ICT professionals. If you talk about Microsoft Deployment Toolkit and Windows Deployment Services, these have some limitations. However, SCCM, which is an abbreviation of System Center Configuration Manager, offers you a lot, where you can manage devices and, in addition to that, users as well. Hi everyone, this is Jay Singh and uh, welcome to my channel TechNext Solutions and I decided to start a new YouTube video series on SCCM. So I would like to share my experience with SCCM. I have been working with SCCM from more than four years and I have done SCCM deployments and on daily basis I work with SCCM and where we support primarily Windows 10 and user devices. Okay. So we will start this series with fundamentals of SCCM. I know fundamentals are a bit boring, but they are very important. Okay. And then we will discuss about how we can implement our SCCM in test lab. And then we'll check out SCCM's functionality and how it can be used. So throughout this video series, I will be referring to Microsoft documentation and where you can actually go and read this documentation in your own time. So let's just talk about fundamentals of SCCM, what SCCM is. So SCCM is a suite of management solutions. It manages both users and devices as well. So now let's have a look at why we use Configuration Manager. So one of the main thing is it minimizes manual tasks and maximizes um, software investments because you can monitor which software you use a lot if some software you use less you can minimize the license and on-demand software available for users where users they go online and they browse software center and the software center we will discuss in the forthcoming videos and from there they can click and install required software and the compliance setting management with the help of SCCM where we actually check the compliance settings on the configured devices. And of course, asset management like servers, desktops, and mobile devices. So now let's talk about Configuration Manager deployment. So when we deploy Configuration Manager, we deploy it as one or more sites. So when we deploy as one more sites, we talk about hierarchies. Either it's a one or more, it's just a hierarchy. And when we deploy as sites, there are different type of sites we have. The first one is CAS, Central Administrative Site. Okay. And it can support up to 25 child primary sites. So now the next one is child primary site and something similar, standalone primary site. We'll look at the difference. What is the difference between child primary site and standalone primary site okay and the last one is a secondary site anything which comes under child primary site or standalone primary site it is called as secondary site and secondary site it does not support for the child sites so CAS which is central administrative site uh, it is for large-scale deployments and it will manage other sites and uh, it require additional site for managing devices okay and this additional site is child primary site and you cannot change actually CAS to a primary site second one is standalone primary site so it is for small scale deployments and you can manage devices directly from this site however CAS requires child primary site to manage devices. So standalone primary site, it does not require additional sites. And as we discussed already that um, uh, CAS, it requires additional site to manage other devices. And there's always a option for expansion to a CAS and you can more, uh, you can add more child primary sites as well. Okay, so what is the difference between standalone primary site and child primary site? So most of the things are same, only standalone primary site, it comes at top of the hierarchy and child primary site, it comes under CAS. And also 
with standalone primary site you can install all the available roles however in child primary site some of the roles you cannot install because they are already installed on CAS on central administrative site okay so and the last one is secondary site and secondary site it always comes under could be standalone primary site or child primary site okay and all clients managed by primary site however secondary site it just helps primary site it could be standalone or child primary site so now let's talk about how many clients can be managed so one CAS can manage about 1 million um, clients and child primary site one child primary site can manage maximum 150,000 and on the other hand standalone primary site can manage maximum 175,000 whereas secondary site can actually manage maximum 15,000 clients okay for further reference links are given in the description which can be checked site system roles so we can actually install roles so where we install SCCM, this server becomes site system server and further we can install roles. So there are a lot of roles available. Let's have a look what are the, these roles and um, we'll have a quick look and in your own time you can read about these roles and some of these roles we will be actually using um, quite often and um, let's have a look on these ones first. So one of the role can be application catalog website point and if you talk about further we have certificate registration point and database warehouse service point distribution point that's going to be the main one and um, endpoint protection point enrollment point and there are more so read in your own time and in the forthcoming videos we will talk about all these roles in more detail when we install them also some of the features and roles um, they are actually removed and depreciated. So in the documentation, if you go on this documentation, you can have a look at what other uh, features which are removed and depreciated and um, some of the site servers as well and some of the clients as well. So licensing is another thing. With the licensing, there's LTSB, which is Long Term Servicing Branch. At the moment, 1606 is supported and customers with active software assurance can use that okay and there's another one called current branch so current branch is up to date um, wherever any feature update or any in console update uh, there these updates are delivered for current branch and there's another thing is technical preview also basically name tells all for testing and pre-release software so if you would like to test and you can use technical preview for that so um, a link is given in the description as well you can go on to that link and read more about this so now let's have a look at hardware requirements which are recommended by Microsoft if it's a standalone primary site with a database site role on the same server and CPU is 16 cores it's 96 GB memory and 80% of this memory has to be uh, provided for SQL Server. Okay, and with standalone primary site server with a remote site database, um, CPU can 8 cores and memory can be 16 GB. Okay, and you can have a look at this table and this is the recommended hardware requirements by Microsoft. That's all for this video and please give a thumbs up to this video and show your support and do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not done yet. See you in the next video.